Recording in progress. Yeah, I just need to record this bloody vision so I can put the vision on YouTube. We've got the oh, audio. Oh, I thought you press record. Let's start again. It's right. No, no, we'll keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, I always, I always start the clip on YouTube like a minute in because I forget. I go, yep, press record, I start. And then when I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, I haven't started recording the video part. Um, you anyway. Gonna this? You're going to leave this video? Nah, leave it in. <laughs> so, Sam, how's the first week of retirement anyway. been? <laughs> yeah, going um, smoothly like this. <laughs> Classic. No, really, really nice, actually. I've um, spent a lot of time on the phone. I've spoken about spending time with my partner, and I think I've been just MIA like I normally would. Um, but, yeah, no, just speaking to everyone that's had a real crucial impact or, or role in my career, and uh, that's been, yeah, really nice sharing, I guess, um, their thoughts but also memories that we've shared. Have you had a fight yet with your partner about you being on your phone too much? <laughs> I don't think so. No. Well, Ben, um, I think when he played elite sport was a bit crazy on the soccer field, but is the most cool, calm, collected person you'll find. So I think if I'd try to start a fight, I wouldn't even get there. (laughs) Okay, right. I think he knows that I'm home for good now. So, um, you know, we'll get sick of each other at some point. So just in the first week, what have you, how have you adjusted to not having a routine? (laughs) Like, obviously, you get an off-season normally, right? But this isn't an off-season. This is Life. This is it. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's been weird. But I, uh, the best thing has been that I haven't had to fill out. We do a lot of daily monitoring and these apps that we have to fill out. And so going to bed each night, not having to think if I'd done it or fixing it to go to sleep is kind of nice. Have you, let, have you binged on any food or anything? Have you gone, like... You know, like a. What you're gonna say on TV shows, and I was like, "Yes, we uh, spent all weekend watching clickbait." If you haven't, watched oh, it. I haven't. Is <laughs> it good? Uh, yeah, it's really good. We watched it in two days, so um, <laughs> watch that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm still. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm just still finding my feet. I'm still doing a bit of online stuff with Aspire, and yeah, kind of trying to tie up. Loose ends and had some really nice job offers as well. So just trying to, um, yeah, just tie everything up and, um, yeah, I'm sure the routine and all those things will, will come back. So I guess the big question, the de- decision to retire. So you mentioned in a video that you put out on your socials that you knew that 2021 was going to be your last year. And that's kind of taken everyone by surprise because – I guess in your second last game against the Fever, you played on Janelle, you shut her down and basically got the Giants to a grand final, which was arguably one of your best performances. So why now? <laughs> why not? I, I think that's what I started saying to back to a couple of people. Like, why not? Um, yeah, I think I signed two years ago and I remember walking out from that meeting and thinking this could be the last contract that I sign, obviously not knowing that we were going into a pandemic and what the last two years of that contract would look like. But, um, you know, everyone talks to you about the transition as an elite athlete and what are you doing now that's going to help you when you transition. And I think that kind of hit home when I returned home to play for the Giants in 2017 Um, While I was a junior pathway athlete, um, no one really knew who I was. Like, obviously, a lot of people did, but um, I had to build those relationships and and connections and, I guess, build my my name and my reputation again. So I've kind of spent five years really progressing that through both a business and and personal space. And, um, yeah, I really admired Nat Von Berto, who was captain of Australia and and the Adelaide Thunderbirds in my first year, and she went through it out the whole season not saying a word um, and then didn't tell us till after the grand final. And I really admired that because it shows that she was very team first orientated, which I pride myself on. And um, yeah, I just, I don't know, at the end of last year was like, I just knew I'd been asking Ben, my partner who played in the A-League for like 16 years, like, how do you know? How do you know? And he just kept on saying to me, you'll know, like, you just will know. And I just, as soon as I said it out loud over Christmas and told Um, like my parents and my family, um, I just had that sense of relief, which I knew it was right. And then going into another 
you know, insane year, um, just everything, little signs and bits and pieces and getting excited about other opportunities and what you put in your time into. Yeah, for me, it all just made sense. And then why not? I'd played 100 games. I, yeah, showed in that second last game the importance of a player like me who just does their job. Um, I felt like I contributed to the team quite well this season um why wouldn't I like what a cool way to go out when you've shown your value and who you are as a player and starting and finishing on a grand final like I just think it all kind of makes sense do you think there's parts of elite sport that us fans don't get to see that really make sport I guess a lot harder than it might seem from the outside Yeah, absolutely. And I think the only people that probably know that of what goes on in an elite athlete's career are those that are connected to them, Um, whether that's family or friends or or close connections. Um, Yeah, like while we celebrate, you know, the wins and the success and how good you are, um, I guess we show the sadness in terms of injuries. But between that, we don't really talk about much else. Like if you're not performing, if you're dropped... Um, how hard it is to continually be consistent, Um, you know, everything that's pretty brutal um, that goes on. And I think that's why everyone loves documentaries and and books behind because I get a chance to see what actually goes on in those environments. Do you, did you have any moments of regret? Not regret, but like during the season (laughs) where you're like, oh, maybe I will go one more season. Oh, this year. Oh, the only person that made me semi think like that was Amy Parmenta, um, purely because I'd, I'd, she's a good mate. And, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed playing with her and being a part of her journey. And then April and I connecting again. Um, Apes, for me, was the benchmark when I was 16-year-old and she was 17 for state. Like, she was the goalkeeper that I pinned myself up and, and wanted to be playing like or as good as her. So for her and I to come back together was really special. And, yeah, Amy was probably the only person that was like, oh, sorry, just because she wanted to continue playing and like everyone else didn't think that I would finish. So, But everyone, everything else, no, I think I was happy with my decision. So how surprised were your teammates? Yeah, really surprised. I... Um, you know, I wanted to get home and connect with my family and that whole hub was really um, challenging on your well-being and your emotional and physical state. So, um, yeah, I guess I wanted to come home and I don't know if I, w- I was definitely sure, but I don't know, just priority was to get home and been such a hard season and, um, yeah, and I put it off for about a week and then, yeah, made a couple of phone calls to teammates letting them know, um And the nice thing, I guess, was the value that they saw in me, not only, you know, a player on court, but what I bring to the club and how much of, I guess, a loss that can be. So, yeah, those conversations um, were really shocking and the the club was shocked and all of that. But, um, you know, really happy for me as well. It's, you know, my decision and my career and, yeah, everyone's, you know, wishing me the best. Obviously, being an elite athlete, you get some great perks out of that. <laughs> but are you able to... And, like, you know, you're living a dream, right? Like, yeah, your job was to play netball. Can yeah, you Can you cool. talk about some of the, I guess, tougher times that people wouldn't necessarily see? Like, being away from family, trying to have a relationship in that time. I, I guess especially in the last couple of years while the hub situations have been going on. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I think you nailed it in terms of the challenges we face. Um, I mean, you know, most people know that I'm from Newcastle and, um, you know, where I live with my partner, our house is here, all my family's here. So while I stayed a fair bit during the week in Sydney, like all my life was back here. So the travel um, and the commuting you know, that's a lot of hours in the in the car. You yeah, you sacrifice a lot of weddings and friends and all of those kind of things. Um, my niece, one of my brothers, um, had Harper. My niece uh, three months ago, so that was the day that we landed in Perth with that kind of oh, nightmare of a situation. And then like I met her once, and we went into a hub for three months. 
um, and now we're in lockdown. I mean, I know that everyone's not able to see their family and, and friends because of COVID, but I guess what I'm trying to say is, yeah, you do uh, lose a lot of time with your family and friends and those that are close to you. And yes, the sacrifice is worth it. Um, but yeah, it's while it is our dream job and we love to do it at every you know, one dreams to be um, a professional netballer. It certainly has its sacrifices and challenges, I guess, like every job does. And I think that's a great point just because I guess something I want to reiterate that I try and live by, just because someone else has it worse doesn't mean your situation yeah, doesn't have shit true. points to yeah. it too. Um, yeah. Have you... Because that was... Sorry, that's... I was just going to say that's what was hard in the hub was like we were doing it so tough... And then you'd fight with yourself to be like, oh, yeah, there are people that are worse off. There are people that have lost their job where you still get to play netball. There's girls at home that would love to play netball. So you do get caught up in this almost battle of, yeah, like trying to be grateful because you are, but trying not to and covering up that it's hard. But acknowledging, like you've got to acknowledge like, yeah, this is a really shit situation. Like I'm in lockdown at the moment in Newcastle. Um, in a one-bedroom apartment with my partner, both working from home. I'm on reduced hours from work, but like, yeah. I still get to go to the beach every day. I'm still grateful. Yeah, I still have a yeah. roof. Up. You know what I mean? Like, I'm yeah. annoyed because it's a shit situation, and I have my days. But just like anyone, you've you're allowed to sort of have your moments where you're like, "This is shit," yeah, and acknowledge, but then move on. Have you yeah. you mentioned like missing weddings and um? So just laugh. <laughs> Someone's knocking on my door with a bunch of flowers. Go, 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 go. You've got to answer that. Go, go. Oh, Ben. That's right. (laughs) Can't you see the florist? It's like... Yeah. (laughs) Has Ben got the door? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Can we bring the flowers in? This is great. Oh, if you like. Ben will... um, We'll see who they're from. (laughs) Sorry, next question, Way. Um, You can pass the the flowers. Yeah, sorry. You mentioned talking about like weddings and stuff and like friendships. Have you like lost friendships because you can't get to a wedding because of netball and have you have you just had distance become an issue with friendships because of netball? Yeah, I oh yes and no. Like I think um I've been really lucky. Um oh here you go. Can I please have them? <laughs> Did you buy me flowers for me? Yeah. Well, I mean, that would have been a perfect setup, wouldn't it? (laughs) Oh, they're beautiful. Um. Yeah. So. Um. Yes and no. Like, I think I've had a lot of um friends and stuff in my career that have been really close to me. So I've never really had the time to have these massive friendship groups or anything like that. Um. Because since I've been younger. You know, I was traveling up and down the freeway in bits and pieces. So I'm really grateful that the friends that I do have, yes, I may have um, lost connection with in terms of can't call them up or message them all the time. But I think they're the ones that, you know, are really valuable because time doesn't matter. They'll, you know, listen to, support you. Um, I think most of them are really excited that I am retiring now because it means that I do have more time to spend with them. But like, yes and no, um, you know, my netball's given me some beautiful friendships as well. Something that you don't have to touch on if you don't want, but I'm curious as, I guess, a male and being completely uneducated on the topic, yeah. when it comes to, like, having kids, is that something that gets spoken about in the elite environment? Like, obviously, if you want to have kids, you probably need to stop playing slash have a year off slash have you want to work it. But, like, and then... I don't really want to get into the topic of age, but obviously the older you get, the harder it is to have kids. Yeah, you're, trying to, you're trying to tell me I'm old. No. No, uh, no, no. Good question. No, I understand what you're saying. I think there's a couple of aspects to it. Um, you know, Players Association have done a lot of work around, uh, yeah, pregnancy and coming back and returning to play. And I think we've got some incredible role models in um, I mean, Beck Bully was part of our team, um, April Letton, Gretel, Rav, like it's now a more uh, supported thing to, to stop and have, um, you know, a baby or two or, or whatever your kind of plans are and, and come back. Like I think that's more 
supported now. Um, but the other part that I think, you know, does need a bit of work is these conversations when you're younger. Um, when you are younger, you just want to be a professional netballer and the strain that it puts on your body in ter- when you're developing and in terms of training hours and, you know, all of those things over a really long time does impact your body. So, you know, there's a lot of studies around knee injuries and, and the programming and how we need to um, strengthen and add prehab, you know, uh, the pathway athletes in coming through. But I think that's probably the next step as a sport is, yes, um, having that support around returning to play netball, but the impact of what, um, you know, it has on your body and like you touched on, what's your timeline and all of those kind of things. Because I know that there's some um, incredible netballers that we've had in the past that would, that have experienced it. I think Nab Medest has been quite vocal, um, like Pratt's Liz Ellis, like um, if they knew this all these years ago or education, like I just think there's a bit of space and I'm just talking from my opinion. I'm not sure if there is some studies already happening. I know the AIS is kind of looking at it, but yeah, I think that's probably the next step. Is there anything in player contracts at the moment? Do you get maternity leave? Like how would that work if you be – like, I don't want you to divulge anything that you know about specific yeah, details of people um, who've. Gone yeah, no, because I think, uh, I think Gretel would have. Yeah, I think that's. Um, I mean, these are the. I know I listened to your one with Joe Weston the other day, um, and she mentioned around the money was negotiated, mm. but the other kind of um, expectations and rules around that. I would think that those things um, would be the next discussion. Um, in that CPA piece, so what that looks like um, for players. And I'm sure, I don't know Gretel's contracting situation, but um, I think they were quite, you know, good with her and especially the Australian Diamonds named her in the squad um, and gave her that leave. So, yeah. You weren't involved uh, in Gretel's contract negotiations? (laughs) You didn't get that (laughs) across your table? Um, (laughs) Speaking of, though, (laughs) with um, with the Players Association... A question that uh, popped up on Twitter after I had the conversation with Joe: Do you yeah. all do the clubs nominate a person from their team to be on the board? Is that how it works? Good question. No, it's uh, look again. It might be different in other clubs, uh, but I think for us, um, it's self-nominated plus team nominated um okay. like you you kind of go to person is always more a senior player and then your um your second person that's on the board is normally that person to to learn and start um understanding the ropes so when giants were started so i'll backtrack when i was at adelaide um erin bell was our kind of representative and certainly uh she went to bat for us and and was quite good in in representing us as a team so i knew um the likes of her and you know there's been incredible people that have been involved in our players association so i understood the purpose behind it the the time that was volunteered and put into it and why it was important for the next generation so when i came to giants uh kim green was our a board member and asked, um, I think there was a couple of us, um, and because I knew the importance of it, I said yes. It was very daunting um, sitting on the phone calls, listening to all these serious, important conversations and not knowing too much about it. But that was a great thing in learning back then and having all the senior players on that have now progressed, learning off them, um, that I think has helped certainly me in the last probably two years, 12 months to really have a bit more of a say and important role on the Players Association. So that's how we normally kind of like to do it is obviously put your hand up and because you volunteer. Like last year, we were on the phone for like two hours every day for two months when all the COVID stuff and season stopped. So you certainly got to be able to volunteer a lot of your time, be passionate about understanding what your players want and what's important to them and and I guess not be afraid to be that spokesperson between your players and your club as well. Has that helped you create, do do you think that's helped you develop into a more rounded person coming out of netball in terms of business and stuff going forward? Yeah, absolutely. The CEO of netball, 
Ball New South Wales a couple of years ago got me to do my board of directors course and that helped plus sitting on the board and understanding that. And also, yeah, you learn a lot, like just listening to people speak. We're fortunate enough to have Jeff who uh, is our chair and used to be on the board of um, Netball Australia and, and does a lot in terms of the Olympics. So you can imagine just sitting and learning from someone like him and, and um, our CEO in Kath Hubby Williams. Like not only is, do you have a job to do, um, I've worked so much off them, the way that they speak, uh, they see things, how they negotiate. Yeah, I, I've certainly got, I think, as, a lot out of it as much as I've given to the Players Association. So we've got contract, the contracting period and contract negotiations going on at the moment across the league. How was that time for you as a player when you were going through those kind of situations? Yeah, it's an interesting time. It can be really exciting for some players and and quite stressful for other players. Um, Look, I've been through both ends of it, I think, with a club that – or clubs that certainly wanted me and and really excited. And then also, um, yeah, my last year – in Thunderbirds, um, yeah, I, I don't think I've spoken to too many people about it, but I'm happy to share it because I think it shows what can kind of go on um, with players. Um, I had a conversation yeah, at my last club and, and went in prep to think that they might say, you know, going with a different direction or we're looking at, you know, options or we're just unsure. So I prepped myself for that meeting and went in and it was quite, no, 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 like we want to keep you. And um, straight after that, I lost uh, my granddad who was one of, you know, the most important people in my life. So I went home to Newcastle for I think it was about two weeks and and felt okay because I thought I'd had that conversation. I need to do what I need to do. It really rocked me. What need to be with my family and went back. And that was a time where you used to play a and after the season. So I was employed by Netball SA. I, um, yeah, had a job to do in terms of A&L. Um, so I still had a lot of commitments for about two months um, and got, yeah, asked into a meeting and thought uh, that it was potentially to continue the conversations that I just had. Um, and what I didn't see coming was, um, yeah, I sat in that meeting and got handed a letter. So I couldn't believe that I got a letter, like not even just speaking words and gave me a letter saying pretty much thank you for all that you've done uh, for this um, organisation, um, but thanks, but no thanks. And Hang on a sec. So you walked into a, a meeting, you sat yeah. down, there were other people in the room, and they yeah. literally handed you a letter and didn't say anything. That what they said, like, you know, um, oh, look, I can't even remember because I've kind of traumatised, yeah. removed it from my memory, but, you know, something along the lines of, like, thank you so much, but... Yeah, we, we need to move on um, and gave me the letter and I probably still have it somewhere. Um, and I remember just being like uh, so upset because like, yep. why did you Fair. say that? Like, yeah, <laughs> like why? Anyway, so confused, so angry, really challenging time in my career. Um, obviously had to then scramble to see what other options were there. Um, and you still you had know, to work what, there. At Netball SA. Yeah, what I found really interesting, and I'll never forget this, is as soon as they told me, and obviously I was really visually upset because I did not see it coming. I mean, even if you see it coming, it's still hard oh, to take. Of course. A place that you want to be or, or the team that you want to play for doesn't want you. Like that's still, you know, really tough. And I remember sitting in that room not knowing what to say because at that point you're not confident in your yourself. I didn't see it coming like, you know, I don't know what to say back. And I just remember them going, Sam, you can pack up your stuff. Um, we'll sort out all your commitments and stuff and you can go home. And I remember being like, no, no, like, no, it's fine. And, you know, to my credit, as hard as it was, I had to, I had still had a job to do. So I had to turn up into that office and see these people every day. I had to play an a l season, which at that point was crucial if other teams were looking at me. And to live in this, you know, another state. Like, I and I just remember I was so proud of that at the time and going, you're giving me an easy way out. And no, like my parents always kind of taught me that you have to finish what you signed up for. And and for me, um, I don't know how I did it. I was a mess. But I think it's just a bit of a glimpse of, 
you know, what can go on in this contracting period and how, and it went out in the media. Like I remember they released it, didn't even speak to me, released it in the media saying thanks. And the whole, you know, um, Adelaide community at that point was really lovely because I'd given so much to that, to that state and that sport. So yeah, it's pretty brutal. But so what happened from there? So you went and played the ANL <laughs> season for the Thunderbirds. Yeah. So, um, look, I had a, you know, I had a couple of other options, which meant packing my stuff and, and going again. And look, that club didn't handle recruiting the best. They realized that there weren't too many options, um, and actually came back to me. And as much as that time, I probably would have oh wanted to go God. back and tell them what I thought I had to actually look at it and go, well, what's, what are you trying to achieve and what do you want to do? And one of them was, to still be on the court um, and play in Adelaide out of the other options, that was the best place to do that. And my best friends were still in Adelaide, like Renee Ingalls, Aaron Bell, um, Lee Waddington, like all of these players were my real good mates that were there. So as crazy as it sounds, um, I ended up signing a contract after they, yeah, essentially tried to get rid of me. Um, yeah, with Adelaide Thunderbirds. And Gee, crazy. Willikers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, you know, I hope that shows a, a reflection of me and my character and um, a lesson to how to handle yourself, even if other people don't treat you well or try and give you an easy way out. Um, and you know what? As 12 months, as hard as that 12 months was, I then, at the end of that season, signed with Giants Netball and, and came home and started everything that I ever dreamed of. So sometimes the hardest things and I couldn't explain it and I had no idea why and I remember probably crying most days and not and like so hard to front yourself in that yeah. office every single day, you know, it then shaped the best of the back half of my career. So... <laughs> Now I can probably talk about, I don't think I've really shared that story with anyone. So there you go, Tommy. But I think this gives an insight. Yeah, it gives an insight to, we get excited about who's going where or who's signing, but know that like we all are human with a dream and it can be pretty brutal as well. Far out. So, yeah, (laughs) Jesus. And I guess one thing to mention is that, this is in no way a reflection of the current people at the Adelaide Thunderbirds. We're not trying to, oh. um, you know what I mean? It's just a story. It's what happened to you. When, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm not, I'm, you know, I've been really grateful to to that club, to the people in it, to everything that's happening. Um, I've been very vocal, especially since joining the Giants. I'm certainly proud of all of my times and memories um, of Adelaide, but I think it's, you know, that experience did happen to me. That's all factual. And I think it's important to share as well they might reflect and I'm hope that they've done things differently since then. Like I hope, you know, all of those things, like I just think, yeah, it is important to sometimes share because we, you know, there'll be players that might get delisted this season that still want to play, but a club goes in a different direction and knowing that like social media can be brutal, brutal, but that impacts that player and their dreams and their livelihood, especially if they were interstate like I was, it's tough. Yeah, it's actually an interesting point you mentioned about the Thunderbirds back then because I spoke to Dan Ryan last week and he mentioned when he coached there in 2017-18. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, when he was head coach, yeah. Yeah, sorry. he didn't have a lot of support there as a head coach and he didn't think it was the right time. So hopefully the Thunderbirds have turned things around since those years. Um, but I guess the competition... It's just hard to imagine that an elite sporting organisation at any stage would treat athletes like that. I, yeah, I don't even know what to say. That's just so... Sorry, I've just thrown in podcasts. We'll move on from that. No. No, I just think like, yeah, it's a reflection of, um, yeah, I guess how they, and I could tell, you know, the, the person, I won't name names, but the person that um, gave me that information couldn't look at me. Like I knew that that person didn't want to, do that or didn't want to give me that information and um, hopefully in terms of leadership um, and was embarrassed when they then had to offer me a con- – like that should not have all So happened. they should. So, so they should be embarrassed. Yeah, embarrassed. like it was an interesting experience. But, again, like reflects on me as a person and it's so mm. important to 
represent yourself well no matter what people are throwing at you or how challenging it is. Like I just continued to remind myself that I can only control me and who I am and to not let them give me an easy door out and take it. Like as hard as that was what I went through, that's not a reflection of me and I'm not letting them put me, put that on me, if that makes sense. Yeah, of course. So this period, do you think, how do you view it as now an outsider that everyone's completely off contract or I don't know if you've seen the stuff on Twitter, but all the clubs are tweeting in kind of riddles and yes. Yeah. yeah. What do you, do you like that for, you know, the buzz it's creating in the netball community? I've stayed a bit out of all the, <laughs> the gossip of what's going on because it can, the names that get thrown around and then who actually signs on the dotted line can be a bit, different um and I think I was a part of it in 2016 when the new league started and everyone was on contract off contract and you've almost got a like it's like a puzzle piece like clubs have got to work out their key people and lock them in and then they can work out who fits around that so look I'm sure it's great if you're a top player that you know, it is can once by the club you want to stay there um like you know that's not too bad in terms of signing contracts but if you're a player that's you know wants a change or wants to be under a different coach or needs wants more court time like there's all different reasons why people explore um other options or you might get a knock on a door from a club or you might be a rookie that just wants an opportunity so yeah i've enjoyed sitting back watching everyone uh speculate who's going where i think there is by the sounds of it a little bit of movement but i think that makes the competition exciting because you've got a different team to come up against um i don't think it's a bad thing i think it's exciting and i think for the first time the majority of super netball teams since 2017 have kind of looked the same like there's been a few little movements here and yeah. there but this year could be totally different i mean the re-signings that we've had so far with the Vixens, Kate, Liz and Joe, not really yeah. surprising. And with the Fever, <laughs> Janelle and Courtney, also not yeah. very surprising. And with the Giants, Jamie Lee, also yeah. not... It's Maddie Proud, Pay Tudley. Yes. All but, not ready. <laughs> so, but like now it becomes interesting and the fact like Sophie Garbin is going somewhere, yeah. Nat, Nat Hathorn Thwaites going back home. Yeah. Lightning have a few spots now that Peace has left. Pums and he's left. Yeah. Maddie McAuliffe has yeah, gone to pursue nice. a business career. And that's fascinating. And I guess people look at it the same way they look at your retirement going, but you're still playing so great. You've got so much left in you. And I guess once you've played at the elite level, you've ticked that box and now you go, cool, I've got other things to achieve. And Sam Pullman, the netballer, isn't the only thing to me. Yeah, I learned that this week that, um, yeah, you're so consumed by netball for so long. Yeah, And I'm not going, sorry, I should be, like I'm not walking away from netball. I'm, I yeah, certainly of course. still want a heavy involvement in it. But, yeah, I think at some point you've got to, those doors are opened. Um, Maddie, for example, is pretty impressive herself as well and has given a lot to the Players Association and, and I know that club as well. Yeah, at some point you've got doors that are open and, you know, we've got to have mortgages and all of these other things. At some point you've got to walk through those doors and, and take them and with that creates an opportunity for a younger player coming through that's, that's ready to take that step like we all did when we started. So what is the next step for you? Can you talk us through what you think your next 12... 24 months looks like what you plan to do? Oh, no idea, Tommy. I <laughs> tell you what my three months look like. Uh, yeah, I was pretty clear to the club. I spent a lot of time this year involved in the Giants Academy with the kind of pre elite athletes, which is certainly aligned with my company Aspire and where my passion is. Um, so I've committed to continue with that, which is a good opportunity for me. And um, thanks, mate. Yep. Good little plug for Aspire <laughs> and, Netball. We've both got our drink bottles. Uh, and, you know, learning in a different way and being challenged in a different different way in terms of um, that full-time coaching part um and then yeah i'm trying to give myself a bit of break hopefully we get out of lockdown and we can all enjoy um summer because i haven't stopped in 
about 10 years. So make myself have a bit of a break. And then, um, yeah, I guess quite a few people have called me this week with opportunities. So just giving myself time to really cement what that looks like and, and what I want to do. And yeah, still really passionate about coaching and even keen to look into that kind of board space as well. Cause I really enjoyed that with the players association. So while yeah, a bit of foundation also exciting that um, yeah, what I could be doing in 12 months. So maybe an heir to Kelly Ryan, next CEO of Netball <laughs> Australia. <laughs> Yeah, why not? No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, they're all conversations that I need to have um, in the next couple of months and I look forward to, um, yeah, speaking to those people and, and seeing how I can continue to add value into the sport. Like, you know, I love what uh, Liz Ellis has done and doing for the sport, um, Annie Sargent, Bianca Chatfield, like all of these wonderful netballers um, are still involved in the sport in some capacity and I hope that I see myself in a similar way. Just for those who aren't aware of what Aspire Netball is, can you give us a little bit of a, an insight as to what you do there? Sure can. Oh, that's where my passion is. I love speaking about it. Uh, look, regional athlete, really lucky to have my family who committed in terms of travel and financial to put, you know, petrol in the car. And um, when I came home from Adelaide and joined the Giants, um, no one really could tell me the next kind of regional athlete they were excited about. And, and you and I keep banging on all the time about the Hunter Jagers. Yes. So essentially, it, it feels that that path um, of, yeah, aspiring netballers that want to progress to the netball New South Wales pathway. And look, we've had some incredible success the last couple of years. One of the original girls um, is now uh, uh, in the Swifts. I went to say Giants. Oh, my gosh. Swifts. Give them credit. Swifts uh, Academy, which is amazing. And she's really happy and and, um, doing an awesome job there. And hopefully a couple of the other girls are, progressing pretty close to either Swifts or Giants. So, look, the need is there and um, the girls are getting the rewards. So I'm certainly passionate about it, but it's showing that, um, yeah, like I said, the need for a program like that is there. So it's pretty much you uh, taking, like, the elite talent from local netballers here in the Hunter and regionally, you're training them, you're putting programs in place for them and then helping them progress further up the pathway in a way that they wouldn't have had access to because they're not living in the Sydney CBD. Yeah, and they don't have access to that knowledge or those coaching programs or anything like that, so supporting them. And I think, you know, our Hunter region is quite big. We go all the way up to kind of Foster and Tari um, back. I mean, it's grey lined, but I like to help as many people (laughs) as I can. Downright, you know, to Scone all the way down to, um, you know, the lake. So we have a massive region and there's certainly plenty of talent out there. And, um, yeah, I think I said that this week that netball's given me so much, so many coaches, um, administration, leadership, everyone's put so much time and knowledge into my career. Um, the least that I can do is is share that with the next generation of aspiring netballers to support their career and their journey. Mate, I obviously do have a drink bottle, which I'm showing on the screen now. And if you're only listening to this in audio form, it's also on YouTube, I wasn't aware that there were hoodies. This was not made clear oh, to me. Oh, sorry. Do you want a hoodie? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll hook you up. No problem. Thank you. Um, <laughs> They're really comfy. All my brothers wear them. Uh, so, yeah, I'll hook you up. I and love- beanie. I have a really cool beanie. Get you one of them. Too. Yes, I do. <laughs> I need to be aspired up. Um, no problems. <laughs> Sammy, mate, thank you so much for having a chat. I think um, you've provided a fantastic insight into, you know, being just more than a netballer and there is other sides to things, contract negotiations. Obviously, they're, you know, it's a fun time for everyone on social to guess who's going where, but we all need to remember that they're people that we're talking about. It's not just our favourite club. So, I mean, I don't think anyone's doing anything wrong at all in the way they're creating more buzz and interest in the sport. But it's definitely something that I didn't really think of the, the human side to this when people don't get another contract. Yeah. And don't underestimate, um, you know, kindness I've had, whether it was the last couple of games or retirement, like we're all passionate sports people. We all have our favorite team that we protect or we love or we go for. 
Um, and the kindness of people like that that have reached out and sent me a message being like, might not have gone for your team or might not have cheered for you or, you know, but really respect the player you are or what you've contributed to the sport. So I think, yeah, like you can all, everyone can have their own opinion um, and that, and everyone's unique, which is the best thing about being human, but just don't underestimate a, a comment like that or a message. And we can all say that we don't read most of it. But when you're scrolling through Facebook or Instagram, it's sadly all the ways the one when you're trying to avoid it that comes up, the one that kind of might dig and, and hurt you a little bit. So, yeah, I think if uh, a little bit of kindness and, and reaching out to someone or telling them, you know, what they mean to you or the sport um, can add value as well. Just be nice. Just everyone yeah. be nice and get along. <laughs> Mate, Sammy, thanks so much. I'm so excited to uh, see what you can create further with Aspire. You've already done amazing things. Hopefully, we can get a few more girls in the in the super netball ranks, I guess, really, from the yeah, Hunter region. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm certainly, especially now, while I'm still Giants, um, yeah, my first opportunity was with another club and not home. So, yeah, if we can get them to that level, no matter what uh, club they play for, that would be pretty awesome. Or potentially a Newcastle team that we keep. Uh, Jagers, Jagers, <laughs> Jagers. <laughs> I thought I'd throw that in for you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Um, mate, Sammy Pullman, thank you so much for having a chat and all the best in retirement. Thanks, Tommy.